What is up guys, Sergeant Arger right here, and today I'm reacting to Napoleon's Marshals Part 5. Yeah, we haven't, uh, they just came out with a new part, so that is very cool. Um, my last video was about Tick, um, and why Germany lost World War II, and it had to do with oil, so make sure to check that out. But, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. And one more thing, I'm probably going to have to split this video into three parts. Because, look, guys, look, 40 minutes, that's like 40 minutes, oh my gosh. Um, and if I did that, if I reacted to this whole video, it would have been like over an hour long. Like, way over an hour long. And that is not good. So I'll probably stop at around 13 minute intervals. Uh, and so we'll get three parts, but yeah, let's get started. Terror in war, ornament in peace. I remember it. The words inscribed on every French marshal's battle. In France, the title of marshal or maréchal goes back at least to the 13th century. It represents the highest possible position of military authority. Authority symbolized by a marshal's baton. The title was abolished during the Ooh. French Revolution as incompatible with the egalitarian spirit. Rude! How rude. But in 1804, Napoleon founded a new empire and restored the ancient rank. Cool. This is epic history. I wonder what it looked like when he was first introduced in the 13th century versus how it is like in the Napoleonic Wars. TV's guide to Napoleon's marshals. All 26 have been ranked according to our own evaluation. I think there's only like two more parts. Part six. I think there's gonna be like part six and then part seven, and then it'll be over. If I remember correctly, I haven't reacted to part four in a while. Of their achievements as marshals, with expert guidance from Lieutenant Colonel Remy Pott, former chief. Actually, I'm gonna split this up into two, not three historian of the French army. So far, we've met Marshals Perignon, Brune, Serrurier, Kellerman, Grouchy, Monsey, Poniatowski, Jourdan, Bernadotte, Augereau, Lefebvre, Mortier, Marmont, Saint-Cyr, Oudinot, Victor, Murat, Bessier, MacDonald, Massena. First, a big thanks no, to thank you. Location, training, restriction, worry free. No, thank you. Honey back, full good code. Oh, free. this is all long yet. Here we go. Marshall. Wait, I want to try to guess what. I want to try to guess it. Marshall. Souchet. Marshall Souchet. Ah, oh, god dang it. I swear I've almost never gotten any of the Marshall names correctly. If I had two marshals like sushi, <laughs> that sounds like sushi. Okay, I would not only have conquered Spain but kept it. Oh. Louis Gabriel Suchet was born in Lyon, the son of a prosperous silk merchant. Plans to join the family business were derailed by the French Revolution. Oh no. Suchet, an ardent Republican joined the cavalry of the Lyon National Guard. Cool. In 1793, he was elected to lead a volunteer battalion, and at the Siege of Toulon, distinguished himself by helping to capture the British commander, General O'Hara. He also made friends with a young Major Bonaparte. Hmm. Soon wonder who that is. To serve under Napoleon in his first brilliant campaign in Italy, fighting at Lodi, Castiglione. Hey, look, he kept his little... Weird beard. Napoleon in his first brilliant campaign in Italy, fighting at Lodi, Castiglione, and Bassano. Transferred to Massena's division, he led his battalion with distinction at Arcole and Rivoli, was wounded twice, and promoted colonel. It was in Italy that Suchet learned the most valuable lesson of his career. 
For troops to be effective, they must be properly paid, clothed and fed, something the French Republic consistently failed to achieve. <laughs> that seems pretty obvious, that seems pretty obvious though. <laughs> Despite proving himself to be an excellent organizer and dependable in battle, Suchet never quite made it into General Bonaparte's inner circle. He went on to serve hmm. as a highly effective chief of staff to General Brune, and then to Massena in Switzerland, and was with Joubert in Italy, who died in his arms at the Battle of Novi. Suchet was promoted to General of Division. And in 1800, nice. he was in command of the Army of Italy's left wing. With Massena besieged oh, that's a lot. in Genoa, the defense of southern France fell on his shoulders. In a brilliant independent campaign, he held the Austrians near Nice, then chased them back into Italy, taking 15,000 prisoners. Dang, whoa, 15,000. impressive record, Suchet was not on the list of marshals created by Napoleon in 1804. Why? But then you pick like those terrible marshals that, like, I don't know. I don't remember their names. But like, look, he's he's one of the best ones. He should have been like promoted almost immediately. But then then you have like those ones, like the really bad ones that it shows. Where is it? I don't know. Where? Yeah, see where it shows the screen of all the marshals. What the heck? Worse, in 1805, he was effectively demoted, being given what? command of a division in Marshal Land's Fifth Corps. Why? Nevertheless, it was a role Why? performed with great skill. His division distinguished itself at Ulm and Austerlitz. And the next year led the attack in Napoleon's crushing victory over the Prussians at Jena. Nice. The next year in Poland, his division saw hard fighting at Bultusk, but was then held back to defend Warsaw and missed the great battles of Eylau and Friedland. Napoleon heaped rewards on General Suchet, money, titles, but still no Marshal's battle. Oh my gosh, Suchet that's sad. was sent to Spain, where he'd spend the next six years. Jeez. His goal was to support the siege of Taragossa, then, on Marshal Land's recommendation, Napoleon gave him command of Third Corps and made him governor of Arahan. Era what? Arahan? What the? What the heck? I thought it was Era. I thought it was Aragon, <laughs> or something. Suchet found his troops to be poorly supplied, ill-disciplined, and low in morale. Their first battle together against oh, no. Lake's Spanish army ended in a humiliating rout. Whoa, look at that forehead. Oh my goodness. Against General Blake's Spanish Whoa. Ended in a humiliating rout at Alcanid. That's sad. Suchet found the drummer who'd started the panic and had him shot in front of the entire corps. He then reorganized his troops and restored discipline and pride with two quick Good job. over the Spanish. Oh cool. He also faced a guerrilla war in Aragon, a popular insurgency driven by hatred of the French invader. Suchet drew on French experience of fighting counter-revolutionary insurgents in the Vendée, and realized that it was only by winning over the civilian population that he'd be able to make progress. He made it his first priority to ensure his own men were properly paid and fed, something almost unheard of for French troops in Spain. He enforced Why? discipline and made sure requisition supplies were paid for. Well, that's good. He told his troops, I will look after your well-being, and you, by your discipline, will give security to the inhabitants. You will make them, by your conduct, care for the government of King Joseph. He told the Spanish people, My troops will not impede your harvests nor overcrowd your cities. They will live in the countryside, ready to protect you. Religion and clergy will be respected. That is nice. Crucially, Suchet also promised protection from the many Spanish guerrilla bands who behaved no better than bandits. Oh, rude. His practical and humane approach won respect and brought results. The guerrillas could never be completely defeated, 
but Suchet made Aragon <laughs> the safest and best run region in occupied Spain. Nice. He extended French control of eastern Spain with a series of successful sieges of Lerida, Mequinenza, and Tortosa. In June 1811, he took Tarahona. For this victory, Napoleon finally awarded him his Marshal's Battle. Finally? Jeez. In Spain. Then he moved south. He defeated a larger Spanish force at Zapuntum, then took the great city of Valencia, along with 18,000 prisoners and nearly 500 guns. Well, he's taking, a, he's taking a lot of land. Napoleon rewarded Suchet with the title Duke of Albufera. What does that even mean? The overall situation in Spain was deteriorating steadily. Oh no. The Zans became better organized and supplied. The British Navy was able to land troops on the coast to make diversionary attacks. While Napoleon withdrew more and more units for his own camp. No! No! King Joseph and Jourdan were defeated at Vitoria, Suchet had no option but to fall back towards the French frontier. At least over there, there's like a bunch of mountains. Well oh boy. On Napoleon's abdication, Suchet remained undefeated, still holding the French Undefeated? When Napoleon nice. From exile, Suchet went to meet him in Paris. It was the first time they'd met in person in eight years. Wow. Marshal Suchet, you have grown greatly since we last saw one another, the Emperor told him. He entrusted Suchet with command of French forces in the south, an important independent command for which few men were better suited. Suchet dutifully kept France's enemies at bay until news arrived of Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo. Dang, if only, like, he wasn't, like, if only he was given more power. I wonder what he would have been able to accomplish then. Following the second Bourbon restoration, Suchet was dismissed and retired to his country estate, where he died in 1826. Oh, darn. He was still held in such esteem in Aragon that a mass was held to pray for his soul in the cathedral of Zaragoza. Dang, wow. Suchet was a brilliant commander, widely regarded as the best administrator in Napoleon's army. He was also one of the few who thrived with the responsibility of independent command. He never had the opportunity to prove himself on the war's decisive battlegrounds. But when Napoleon, in exile on St. Helena, was asked to name his best general, he replied, That is difficult to say, but it seems to me that it is Suchet. Wow. 5. Marshal Ney He was priceless for his valor, his, uh, his obstinacy and retreats. He was good for the uh, Okay, I'm sorry, my brain is tired. I just got out of school. He was good for leading 10,000 men. Otherwise, he was a true <laughs> idiot. Oh. So why is he number five? Dang. A Cooper's son. Oh no, I didn't get to try to guess his name. From Lorraine, a German speaking region of France on the eastern frontier. His father wanted him to become a clerk, but the young Ney, impetuous and headstrong, joined a Hussar regiment instead. Oh. He soon distinguished himself as a fine horseman and fencer. Oh no, is my computer about to... Yeah, no, it is, okay. ...as a senior sergeant by the time of the French Revolution. When war broke out, Ney was made an officer, and became aide-de-camp to General La Marche. His reports describe Ney as active, brave, and a skilled tactician. Ney served in the Netherlands and on the Rhine, fighting at Valmy, Jeunemart, and near Vinden. He was seriously wounded once, and captured once. Fellow officers nicknamed Ney the Indefatigable. His men preferred the Rougeau, the ruddy or red-faced. The 30-year-old Ney was now a proven brigade commander, 
despite refusing promotion more than once, regarding himself as unqualified. In 1799... He refused promotion? Calling himself... Oh my gosh, that is interesting. Very interesting. Following reports from General Bernadotte, he finally accepted the rank of General of Division. Cool. In 1800, Ney and his division played a major role in General Moreau's great victory over the Austrians at Hohenlinden. This brought him to the attention of France's new first consul, Napoleon Bonaparte, with whom he'd still never served. When they met in Paris, they warmed to each other. Napoleon entrusted Ney the delicate task of imposing his act of mediation on Switzerland. Which he carried out with swift efficiency. Yes, the same good job. They married Agli Louise Augier, a friend of Josephine's daughter, Hortense, now Napoleon's stepdaughter, drawing him closer. Oh my gosh, there's so many freaking. There's a lot of marshals that married into Napoleon's family. To France's future imperial family. In 1804, Napoleon proclaimed a new empire. Ney was made a The next year he was leading sixth. Oh wow, that was fast. Against Austria. He was accompanied by Colonel Henri Jomini, a Swiss officer and military theorist. Ney had been quick to recognize his talent, giving him a job as his aide de camp and helping to publish his work. Jomini would win fame as one of the 19th century's great military thinkers. And nice. served Ney well as his chief of staff on several campaigns. During the advance against the Austrians, Jomini encouraged Ney to ignore orders from Marshal Murat that would have allowed the enemy to escape. Good. Their decision was vindicated when Sixth Corps won a brilliant action at Elchingen that closed the trap on General Mack's forces at Ulm. Ney's corps missed the Battle of Austerlitz, but was in action against the Prussians the fall. Also, is it just me or does the map look like, you know, like the texture and just the style of it? It looks kind of different to me, I don't know. Following year. There had already been signs that Ney's aggressive instinct, which made him a brilliant tactical leader, could also get him into trouble. At the Battle of Jena, Ney ignored his orders and charged straight at the Prussian lines, becoming what? cut off. His troops had to be rescued. So why is he number five then? A furious Napoleon remarked, Ney knows less about soldiering than the last joined drummer boy. Ney was criticized again by Napoleon three months later, when his foraging raids into East Prussia appeared to provoke a Russian offensive. The winter maneuvering culminated in the horrific Battle of Eilau, which Ney's corps reached only as darkness fell. That summer, Bennigsen's Russian army launched a surprise attack, hoping to encircle and destroy Ney's 6th Corps near Gutstadt. Ney, outnumbered four to one, conducted a brilliant fighting withdrawal and escaped the trap. A week later, Napoleon caught Bennigsen's army at Friedland. Ney led a crucial attack on the enemy. That man is a lion, said Napoleon, watching his advance. Sixth Corps' onslaught shattered the Russian left, leading to one of Napoleon's most decisive victories. For all his flaws, Ney had proved himself one of Napoleon's best tactical commanders, and was rewarded with the title Duke of Elkingham. So he was just... So he was, so he was mostly good just because he was a good tactical commander. Okay. In 1808, Ney commanded a corps during the invasion of Spain. He spent more than two years in the Iberian Peninsula, and like most of Napoleon's marshals, found it a bitter and frustrating experience. In 1810, he joined Marshal Massena for the invasion of Portugal, but deeply resented being placed under his command. He criticized every decision, helping to create a poisonous atmosphere at French headquarters. Oh no. 
The French advance on Lisbon came to a halt at the lines of Torres Vedras. During the subsequent retreat, Ney again demonstrated his brilliant tactical skills, fighting a series of rearguard actions that kept Wellington's troops at bay. But Ney's fury at what he considered Massena's disastrous leadership boiled over into open insubordination. He was relieved of command and returned to France. Well, Massena is braided and lower, so... But he did not remain in disgrace for long. Napoleon knew Ney was worth in battle and that the army adored him. He'd be needed in Russia and was recalled in 1812 with command of Third Corps. As the Grande Armée advanced deeper into Russia, Ney was always near the action, leading attacks at Krasny and at Smolensk, where he was wounded in the neck. Oh no. Amid the slaughter of Borodino, Ney led his corps in attack after attack on the Russian earthworks. When they were finally taken, and he was told that Napoleon would not send in his reserves to follow up their hard-won gains, he exploded with anger. What business has the Emperor in the rear of the army? Since he will no longer make war <coughs> himself, let him return to the Tuileries and leave us to be generals for him. Oh my gosh! ...of Ney's lack of restraint. But his blind faith in the Emperor did not survive Russia. Henceforth, he'd fight only for France. It oh boy. It was the retreat from Moscow that Ney ensured his place among the legends of military history. Just two weeks... Okay, good, because like earlier, he didn't seem like he was necessarily the fifth best. Weeks into the retreat, the Russians routed Davout's rear guard at Vyazma, and Ney and Third Corps took over. Ney was not only an instinctive tactician, and apparently immune to fear or fatigue, he could inspire or bully other men into superhuman feats of bravery and endurance. A French officer later recalled, I can see him still at the spot where the fighting was hottest, speaking to the men, indicating to the generals what positions they should take up, animating all hearts with the confidence that flashed from his glances. He made an effect on me I don't know how to describe. Oh, wow. At Krasny, when the rear guard got cut off from the rest of the army, Ney angrily rejected calls to surrender and led his men in an astonishing forced march across enemy territory, crossing the French wow. River at night, personally pulling men from the river through the ice. Surrounded by Cossacks, down to 800 fighting men, they formed square and kept moving. Oh my gosh, this should be like a movie or something. Like just, wow, that's a, that actually seems pretty cool. He was more than a hero to the army. He was its talisman. The news of his escape caused rejoicing throughout the army. Napoleon himself remarked, what a soldier. The army is full of brave men, but Michel Ney is truly the bravest of the brave. Ney led the rearguard for the rest of the retreat, and according to legend, was the last man to cross the Nyman River into Poland. Dang. His leadership helped many thousands of soldiers to make it back alive. Ney was rewarded with the title Prince of the Moskva. Continued to serve I don't even know what that means. Though his relations with the Emperor, and Marshal Berthier in particular, were increasingly strained. At Lützen, Ney was moved by the conduct of his young conscripts, who bore the brunt of Blücher's surprise attack, but fought back bravely, helping to win victory. Napoleon then entrusted Ney with command of three army corps. All right, guys, I'm probably gonna stop here because there's only because there's. I think I've been smarter to cut it into three, but then I would have to name the video like Napoleon's Marshal's Reaction Part Three, and then Part Three, 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 and then Part Point, and then Part Three Point Six 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 Six, and I don't want to do that.
we'll probably just start here. Um, we'll probably stop here, I mean, and then, yeah, the next video will be the last half. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, and we will continue this tomorrow. So, yeah. Hello, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And, you know, turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. Oh yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good, and if not, better than this one right now. Except for my oldest videos, don't watch those. And, you know, subscribe to these people down here, my fellow sergeants. They're other YouTubers that I either know, or I have high in high regards. Yeah, even my cat agrees. So, thank you for watching, and have a great day.